Well, good to see you all again. It is me, the one and only, probably somewhat forgotten whiskey coach. And thank you very much for joining me again, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, my sincere apologies. It has been far too long since our last uh, meeting. Uh, here I took a look before I uh, broke out my uh, my phone and my tripod for tonight's review and noticed that it had been seven months since the last review. So shame on me. I'll take the hit on that. Um, but uh, we'll move forward and, and, and beyond, hopefully get these up and running uh, a little more regular because I certainly have plenty and plenty of quality whiskeys that I've ascertained over the last seven months that I'd love to talk to you about and share with you. So tonight... Since I have been tardy and uh, in my duties, we are going to knock out two bad boys. Uh, little Book 1, Little Book 2. Freddy Book. Um, Freddy Book. Freddy No. Um, from, uh, from Beam has, uh, has started releasing two whiskeys. Uh, blended whiskeys. Uh, the first one was 2017, which was Book 1 or uh, as they call it, the easy. Um, actually, in this one, it's interesting. If you look at the packages, obviously very similar. They come in the same style, kind of wood um, wood box with a plastic top or a plastic screen or, um, you know, plexiglass. Um, I guess it kind of contains the bottle. Kind of, like your, uh, kind of like your book is, except this is black. But on the second one, you'll see that it actually says the little nickname up top. In this case is the no NOE, nice plain words, simple task. So that's kind of cool they did that. Also on the second release, they did a nice job of describing exactly what the whiskey is. The first one you got to do a little digging, a little sleuthing online, which I was obviously happy to do and we'll share with you here momentarily. But like the presentations a lot, they did a pretty good job with it. But in, in essence, Freddy, the, who was the great, great grandson of Jim Beam himself, actually, and obviously comes from the historic... No family, and if you know anything about bourbon, um, know what that means and uh, the incredible lineage he has. But in essence, like I said, what he's trying to accomplish here with these blends that's going to be uh, an annual release, every release completely unique and, uh, and limited in production, is to, to, to really illustrate an aspect uh, of whiskey that he wants to illustrate and, and emphasize and stress upon. So uh, that's kind of a high level overview um, from a price standpoint. I think both of these were $89.99 uh, here in the States. Um, limited availability, I, I could find them, but with this second batch, you know, a year into this, a year further into this bourbon craze was a little tougher to uh, to pick up. But, um, you know, uh, I, I'm assuming knowing the way this whole thing is trending, it'll become more and more difficult as the years go on. Uh, luckily, I have a couple of these uh, in, the, uh, in the back bar. This I'm still looking to get a backup for. So... Um, I'm going to show off one of my little, my little fun little tools, my little whiskey stave tasting uh, sample uh, stave that I picked up on the Bourbon Trail. My wife and I went there uh, five years, I'm sorry, for our five year anniversary a couple months ago. And by the way, well, you guys probably can't tell, but the coach is down uh, 40 pounds. Yeah, he's uh, basically... I basically lost the equivalent of my three-year-old, almost four-year-old son. So, uh, yeah. So if you're noticing a little less of me, that's probably a good thing. Uh, watching yourself on video over, uh, you know, a hundred times or however many uploads I have now, it's, you start to notice after a while that, you know, there's a little more than me than I would have liked. So, all right. Enough talk. Let's get right into the whiskey. Um, like we always did and will do. First time I've tried either one of these guys. I'll be I'll be very upfront and honest with you there. I'm pretty pumped about it. Uh, again, not to not to belabor this a whole lot, but the uh, the bottle is very very kind of much mirror the uh, the Booker style. They even have a nice little kind of wax stamp right there saying a little book. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this first one as I uh, as I open her up and uh, and uh, prepare to uh, to give it a shot. This is an interesting blend, and it actually, again, took a little bit of homework on my end because there was almost, it was almost a little, um, it kind of came out and just kind of was out there, and they didn't really talk a whole lot about the, uh, the whiskey in, inside the bottle. 
And I think the reason is because it's a little complex. It's not an easy story. And the wax goes flying. Uh, like you typically see in a, uh, in a bourbon release or a whiskey release. So this one is a blend of four different whiskeys. The first one being a four-year-old uncut, unfiltered bourbon. So a young bourbon, relatively speaking. Uh, the second one is a 13-year-old uh, uncut, unfiltered corn whiskey. Uh, the third one is an almost six-year, 100% malt whiskey. And the fourth one is an almost six-year-old uncut, unfiltered rye whiskey. So what he did was he decided at first he was going to try to just do the, the malt whiskey, the corn whiskey, the rye whiskey, base, your basic ingredients in a bourbon. And he was going to basically see if he mixes those together, will it taste like bourbon? Because those are, in fact, the ingredients in bourbon. Will the finished products taste like a bourbon? And he found that really they didn't. Uh, so he, he basically went back to the drawing board, so to speak, and came out with the, uh, or added the four-year-old bourbon, which kind of gave it what he was looking to, uh, looking to have in the, uh, in the flavor profile. So um, in terms of the stats on this one, we are looking at a whopping 128.2 proof. I oftentimes, like I, like I tell y'all, I oftentimes try not to do a ton of research. I do enough to be dangerous, enough to talk about with you guys, but not enough to completely kind of tamper or sway my opinion on the, uh, on the pour. Um, what I've heard about this one, and again, as I talk about that, I'm going to open, open bottle number two here, and we'll discuss this with you here in a second. But what I've heard about this one, uh, the, uh, the first release, is that it's a little hot. And at that, at that proof, that's not surprising. Because of the heat, um, you know, and, and especially when, when we're in today's climate where we have a ton of new whiskey drinkers uh, experimenting with these limited release trophy type bottles, is that, whoa, that's different. That's interesting. We're going to talk about this here in a second. Is that, uh, you know, when you're looking at a proof that high, people's palates really get blown up. And what I've read is that this guy needs to sit out and open up for a while before it starts to kind of really come into its own. And uh, frankly, from what we're hearing, it gets a little bit better. Um, before I forget, the second release is a 59.40% alcohol or 118 proof. So to repeat, 128, 118. So both very, very high proof spirits. Ooh, and I did notice a difference here. For what it's worth, the, uh, the inside has got like a little, uh, it's really tough to see, isn't it? Yeah. It's got a little plastic insert on it. And the, uh, on the second release, whereas the first release had this kind of quirky little foam strip and like a little tacky adhesive um, number on the back. So... I uh, actually much prefer this second one. It's nice. Uh, okay, stats on the second one. Oh, another thing I like they did on this one, take this back out again, is they give you those vitals right there on the neck tag. Vitals being to blend the three whiskeys. Eight-year Kentucky straight rye. 40-year-old Canadian whiskey. Kind of reminds me of my 40-year-old uh, Canadian club that we talked about and reviewed. And a 13-year-old Canadian rye. Interesting. And what fascinates me about whiskey people is I think a lot of these whiskey people, I know a lot of these whiskey people. I shouldn't say whiskey people. I should say bourbon people. Hold their nose up and poo-poo Canadian whiskey every time I talk to them about it. Dismiss it. Dismiss Irish. Dismiss, hell, a lot of times Scotch. Dismiss Japanese. Dismiss anything that's not bourbon. Yet they're buying this stuff. A whiskey that is more Canadian whiskey than it is bourbon. Kind of cracks me up. I don't know if they even know what the heck it is they're drinking, but I uh, thought that was kind of funny. So let's jump right into this, guys. I am uh, I am excited about this. We are going to do, and I'm going to step aside one second while I grab a straw. Look at me. I am rusty. I'm out of practice. I'm going to grab a straw here, and uh, I do want to taste both of these with and without just a little bit of water to see if we don't get an immediate change. So do this. Nose. Mm. 
fruitier than I thought. Hmm. Herbaceous a little bit. Smells uh, like it's going to be an oily experience. Getting some of the rye. Well rounded. And for 128, as you can see, I can get in there pretty deep without. Oh, there, I got a little bit there. I was just about to say without kind of blowing out my nose, but uh, that one was pretty spicy. All right, let's give this a whirl. It's warm. I'm sure, certainly getting a Kentucky hug there. Finish is a tad abrasive. But I'm getting sweetness. I'm getting kind of a, a, a mellow, a mellowness that you, you wouldn't think you'd see at 128 proof. On the finish, um, it, it, to me, I'm not getting, I'm not getting much of the abrasiveness, the roughness, the harshness. Some of the negative connotations that I was reading about those one. At least on, and that's sip number one, by the way. As, you, as we know at this point, if you've watched any of my videos, and really any whiskey folks um, that, that, that know anything about tasting whiskey, is that you know that first second taste, you know you really got to give it. You got to wait until three or four until you start really kind of judging the character and complexities and flavors in a uh, in any whiskey. So, but that first that first taste wasn't even bad. Hey, what? I like this more than most people did, I think. I think. I'm a little worried at the amount of alcohol in this. It's going to affect, obviously, tasting number two. <clears throat> I'm going to give it one more taste. It's a nice, pleasant experience. It's got fruitiness, it's got nutmeg, it's got like, like a, I don't know, like a, a candy pecan kind of thing going on. It's a nice pour. I'm gonna give that a, give that a 7.9. Yeah, nice, nice quality pour. On to number two, our friends from north of the border. So Freddie apparently, Went north of the border, uh, spent a bunch of time tasting Canadian whiskey straight out the barrel. Was really interested and, and fascinated by some of the fruity, some of the floral flavors he was getting in these Canadian whiskeys, which is something I've been telling everybody about for many, many years. But again, because Canadian whiskey isn't the cool thing to drink right now, uh, a lot of times people don't want to listen. But uh, but yeah, was was pretty interested in some of the, the notes he was getting, kind of understood the... Um, Really, the freedom the Canadian distillers have when making product, you know, even able to add flavoring, able to add coloring, able to use uh, used barrels, those sorts of things. Um, some of the uh, some of the things that bourbon producers, frankly, aren't able to do, and was was enlightened uh, by the experience. Funny, this one's called the Big e or the Little Easy, Big Easy, and this one's called uh, No Simple Task. Kind of a kind of a joke, kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing. He said, almost like one of those deals where he, uh, you know, jinxed himself by calling this one, you know, Big Easy. Took him almost 40, 40 tries until he landed on the blend that he liked uh, on this one. So I'm extremely excited to try this, and let's jump right into it. Delicate nose. It, man, it reminds me of some of my favorite Crown Royal expressions. And it's a, it's a four-year-old Canadian whiskey and a 13-year-old 13 13-year-old 13 Canadian rye. I'm not getting as much of the rye off the top. And what's the bourbon's age? I know, eight-year-old Kentucky rye. Okay, so there is no traditional bourbon in this blend. 
but I am getting sweetness, I am getting floral, I am getting fruit, I am getting um, a much more delicate experience than I did here. I'm almost getting a little bit that you'll get in an Irish whiskey, which is, you know, a maltier, a fruitier, and a, almost citrus, uh, grassy, uh, green notes. Man, this reminds me on the nose doubting it's going to taste like it on the palate it reminds me of crown royal cask 16 which is one of my favorite crown royal. it is my favorite crown royal expression that they've ever that they've ever come up with i'm excited for this one again we're looking at uh five less percentage in alcohol 10 less proof should be a little little more mellow in theory so let's give this a shot Color-wise, who I thought? Color-wise, uh, number one, the 2017, um, darker, makes sense. Using more new, new charred oak, a little lighter on the uh, no simple task. Not nearly the viscosity, not nearly the legs, not nearly the finish. In the uh, in the new edition here, lighter, uh, shorter finish. Um, whereas this this would be uh, Castrol motor oil. This is more apple cider, if that makes any sense. Let's go into this one again. Hmm. guys we're doing we're calling an audible here because i'm already at you know 16 minutes and change i'm not going to add water and, and do this again because we'll be at 20 25 minutes and that's frankly way too long we probably lost a lot of you already but i had a lot to talk about it's been seven months for goodness sake so uh we're just going to do this straight and uh, give you scores <sighs> i like this i like this a lot um it doesn't quite taste like i thought it would taste just kind of as a as a guess as a knee jerk expectation of what this might be you're gonna hate me because this probably isn't what you're looking for you probably wanted me to push one of these bottles ahead or one of these boxes ahead and tell you that I like this one a lot better <sighs> I'm gonna say a 7.9 I like it but neither one of these jumps out at me as a superior superior product. Different, absolutely. But as someone like me who appreciates different varietals of whiskey, I really, really like them both. 7.9, there it is, gentlemen. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me. Again, my sincere condolences. Apologies for not being around for as long as I have. By the way, we are well over 1,000 subscribers now. Views, you know, hundreds of thousands. I don't know how many. But over a thousand subscribers, so a thousand of you, over a thousand of you are going to get a notification that this review is up. And I thank you in advance for watching. As you know, I haven't monetized this. I do this at a labor of passion and love. Um, so thank you so much for, for joining in and catching these when, you, when you're able to. Hope you're enjoying them. Hope to see many more. Matter of fact, I might just knock out another one here as soon as we're done tonight. So, as always, and until next time, double glasses up.